This episode of Sexplanations is sponsored by Coral. It's an app where you can invite your friends, partners, people to have intimate conversations with you. <clears throat> I'm Lindsay Doe, host of this Sex Curious Show, Sexplanations, for one more month. And this is my friend and colleague, Reed Mahalko, who does readaboutsex.com, a hundred other micro things under that umbrella. I, I get around. You're a living encyclopedia of sexuality. So not just something where I open a book and I say, okay, tell me about squirting, and then you give me all the information. But like, a, you are the practicum. People don't use encyclopedias anymore. You're right. It's like we, a, okay. Maybe it's a wiki. You're you are wiki sex know. wiki live. Oh, I don't know. That doesn't. I don't know. It's a long hashtag. <laughs> you are a sexual savant in in I, like I, in every topic I can think of. Mm. Reed has application. So so as as a geek, as a clearly labeled mm -hmm. geek, and as somebody who actually has a lot of insecurities, like I'm actually very insecure. I'm just really secure about how insecure I am. And when I started like becoming sexually active, I wanted to really be good at sex. It was like so mm. confusing, you know, so like the encyclopedia knowledge or wiki or whatever it is, is me trying to figure out in sexual situations, what do I need to understand? And then what skills do I need to learn so that I can be good at sex? And I got really good at trying to understand all the different kinds of sex and then how they all fit together. And I used to be a martial artist a long, long time ago and teach, teach martial arts. So there was kind of like, these are how bodies work and this is how you do a wrist throw. And these are how you do nerve things to people to cause pain. And then for me, when I became sexually active, it was like, ooh, like what do you do to cause pleasure? How does a wrist work? It also applies to like knees and legs and hips and all kinds of other things. Mouths. And, and mouths. <laughs> exactly. And like judo throws and like Aikido things and like understanding how to move bodies through space became a lot of kind of like that's how you listen to people's bodies mm -hmm. and tension and, and movement. And then that became really useful to be like, oh, wait a minute. So rather than hit you with my fist, I want to hit you with my mouth. And like how do we dance in that way? Now, I'm a horrible dancer. Listening to people's bodies. Like, have you ever, have you ever kissed somebody who was a bad kisser? Yes. Did he, it, he ate my face. Did it feel like they were listening to your body? No. So one of the things in, like, learning how to be a good kisser has a lot to do with, like, how do we listen to people's bodies? And how do you also receive pleasure? Because that's a whole other thing. Like you can be good at sex, but not good at receiving. And understanding that when you can receive well and you get into the moment, that's usually really hot for the person or persons who are playing with you rather than just. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm seeing a lot of you in this. We had this conversation after dinner yesterday where part of our curiosity about being sex educators mm -hmm. is if we're kind of teaching people how to fuck us better. So when you say like you're trying to help people be better receivers, maybe. It, oh, well, that was something I had to learn, too. Oh, learn oh yeah. Be better at oh, yeah. Sex? Yeah. One of my lovers was like, you're kind of like fucking a ninja like you make no sound and i'm like really she's like it would be really helpful if you let me know things felt good and that was a really big beginning for me and this was this was before i became a sex geek this was like when i was just starting to have sex with people and then like all these years later looking back like oh like letting out sound and moaning does a whole bunch of things to your vagus nerve mm -hmm your erogenous tissue there's a lot of feedback loops that happen mm -hmm. you're shifting your body from its parasympathetic or sympathetic nervous system to its parasympathetic nervous system which is rest and relaxation mm -hmm. which is when your sphincters start to dilate and you have a lot of sphincters in your body and i know you know these mm -hmm. things um so it's not just your pupils um but it's your throat <laughs> So I was like, like, I wasn't thinking people at yeah. all, but okay. Well, that's a sphincter. <laughs> There's so many cool things to learn. Letting out sound during sex also encourages your partner, hopefully, that it's okay for them to make sound. Like if you're trying to deep throat something, uh, uh, getting in your body and like relaxing your sphincter muscles, like that helps. If you're trying to get something in other holes, so like make more sound when it's appropriate, because it can also be really hot to be quiet mm -hmm. so that no one knows things are happening. But generally speaking making sound. And that's like something I needed to learn to make more sound in bed. And that helped me feel more pleasure. And it also helped my partner feel more turned on because what they were doing to my genitals or whatever was like working. But you you are like, this is, this is who what Reed yeah. is, is yeah. that we could have a conversation about anything. But if you specifically 
specifically go into sexuality. You've got the, uh, those topics. Like- I've had the pleasure of getting to hang out with heroes and, fr- and who are now friends of mine and nerd out even more, like having the brain sex and the Vulcan mm-hmm. mind melds. Yes. I'm very promiscuous. It's That's not a secret. So like I've also gotten the pleasure and also the honor of practicing and dancing with a lot of people. Like for me as a nerd, that's interesting because it's like, oh, like how are bodies different? How are people's arousal arcs different? Like what works, what doesn't? Yeah. You're a nice, well-adjusted Kinsey. A Kinsey? Yeah. Yes. A Kin- Kinsey. Kinsey did all the si- He did oh. all the research and all the reading and like the geeking out and had sex with as many people as he could mm-hmm. in his circle to understand the application. That's very sweet of you to Reed, say. Reed, when you Lindsay. say a lot, what's a lot? How many people have you slept with? Do you have a tally? I don't have a number number. Before I became a sex geek, when I couldn't remember everybody in order, mm-hmm. I started having a lot of shame. And this is another thing that's really interesting is I have a lot of sexual shame. I'm just... I just know that about myself. And I have a lovely friends, some who are very generous with their genitals. Like I ask, I'm like, hey, I'm I'm ashamed about this thing. And they're like, oh, would you like to try it now? And I'm like, it requires seven people. And they're like, I can make seven phone calls. And so like my friends will get together to help me work through my shames about certain things because I I have a fear that people can't love me or won't love me for what I desire. And I and I having worked with thousands of people around sexuality. Like that's common for a lot of us. For me, I have exercised my courage muscles that when I feel shame, I tell people close to me about what I'm feeling ashamed about, which is also a useful skill, like if it's around money or whatever. And then I have friends who are also sex geeks and sex nerds who are like, do you want to do it? Let's do it. Like, we can love you for this. And sometimes I try things and then I'm like, ooh, I didn't like that. Like, I don't think I want to. then it's a choice. Yeah, I'm like, I don't want to do that again. Like, I don't think I liked it. And then there are other things where I'm like, I'm not sure if I like it yet. I don't know if I, it's because I don't feel like I'm competent at it. So the competency, confidence loop isn't there. Or maybe my body just doesn't like it. Or maybe it doesn't like it with you. Or like all these other things that make sense to me where I can like navigate and kind of sift through all these things and just be like, huh, yeah, I don't know. Let me try it again or not. I think we can relate to you in the having sex shame. I I think it's a little bit trickier for people to relate to you in the I have friends who can make phone calls to seven people to have an orgy that uh, heals my wiener. What kind of friends do you have, folks? Like (laughs) this is maybe they're on the app. Maybe they are. <laughs> Before I met you, mm-hmm. I heard about some of your proclivities. Like what were your they? Slut the, magic. My um, slut magic? Hashtag yeah, I think it magic. was, I was at a conference and you were in a cube with people where people could watch in the box. Oh, yeah. They watched from the outside what was going on in the box and the inside and you were doing yep. different things. And then I was at a show where they were talking about you in third person and said, do you have this reputation for having slept with everyone at the conference? That's not true you're right because i was at the conference but i was so proud I'm like can i talk about it's not reverse slut, slut shaming shaming we haven't we haven't found a name for this yet okay but yeah. there is a really interesting thing as somebody who identifies as a slut mm-hmm. i also identify as queer and polyamorous I, and my ego thinks it's lovely and my humorous side thinks it's funny that everyone says reed has slept with everybody the darker side of it is some people don't understand why i haven't slept with them yet and they think something's broken with them because if reed sleeps with everybody why won't he sleep with me but there are other people that are very confused when i go to a play party and if i'm playing with a lot of people mm-hmm. there can be people that are like you know i've known reed for a long time and he's never That's played with me you. like what's what's wrong and so like just just as a as a mega slut or mega sexual which is a term that some people use for, for folks like us, there is this thing that I have to like remind people, like, listen, like I actually don't sleep with everybody. I sleep with who I'm, I want to sleep with. It's not like I don't want to sleep with somebody, but it's somebody has like, Hey, I want to do this thing. I want to dress up like Captain America and have everyone dress up as the Avengers and have a gangbang. And I'm like, that sounds amazing. <laughs> I would want to participate and help mm-hmm. even if I didn't want to have sex with that person because acts of service are one of my love languages. And how cool to help, like being like a lube caddy or mm-hmm. a, a person who's a helper. There's a lot of layers there when you start talking about being slutty and what that means and what other people make it mean. It's cute that everyone says, read slept with everybody at the conference, but but there's a there's an undercurrent there that can really 
fuck with people. So how can we do it better? Well, I mean, we can do it better by practicing creating spaces where it's safe to talk about things that we're afraid to talk about. I mean, there's also a lot of stereotypes and assumptions about men and being promiscuous. I don't want to take your language away from you, but is it possible that you're not promiscuous and you are a slut? Doesn't promiscuity well, imply that you don't discriminate? I don't know. I, what's the Latin? That's that's a that's a Lindsay question. Coral, do you have this information? Because I think that, I mean, I think promiscuity is awesome, but I also think it, part of it is that you, you don't discriminate. I don't take my casual sex casually. I have a little mantra of leave the campsite better than you found it. Part of my journey in figuring out like who I am and oh my goodness, like I'm really not monogamous and like deconstructing those pieces. Like part of my journey was trying to figure out like, well, how do you have casual sex, but like leave people feeling great about it and not take it for granted and try to, you know, have all the conversations and set the expectations so that we can have a fun time and not have it have to mean anything we didn't agree on. And there's a lot of a lot of complexities around attachment styles and how we imprint and start to fall in love. Like what happens when we haven't dated anybody in a long time, we haven't got touched in a long time, and then you have a really good sex with somebody or a date that you haven't had a date in a long time goes like those three day weekend dates with sleepovers. And then all of a sudden it's Monday and you're like, you're my soulmate. How do you delay that kind of imprinting so that the two of you or the, or the more of you can figure out like, what do we actually want to do? That was great. And I'm starting to kind of get clingy and, and do those things with some sort of savvy. And so figuring those things out for me, like I have a thing that that's called the casual sex protocols. And that's just a checklist of like, these are things that if you do them, people tend to fall in love if you're having really good sex. You have a thing for all of the things. I have this things. Is, this is what I want them to take away from this. Aside from all of the wonderful things you're saying, Reed is a resource for you on all the things mm. sex. So if you want to learn how to do relationships, Reed. If you want to learn how to come back into human contact post-COVID, Reed. Is there ever going to be a post-COVID? Reed. Like all of that, yeah. you are capable yeah. of guiding people through well and it's and again like a lot of the things that i created the difficult conversation formula the embrace the awkward formula the casual sex uh, protocols the eight-armed octopus of jealousy like all these Wait, and th designing play parties oh yeah, yeah, yeah like throwing the welcome circle for a particular kind of play party because there's so many different kinds of orgies you could throw i have very particular views on the ones on how I like to throw my play parties. All of these ideas and principles and tools, I had to create them to solve the problems I was running into. And that's what geeks and nerds do. Yeah. And like to develop the skills so that you can identify what your challenges are and then how to think your way through them or borrow other people's tools. Like that's the whole thing. Like that's the prize. And then you get to be like the, the awkward eighth grader at the school dance who knows everybody else is awkward. And then you roll in with the embrace the awkward formula. And then you get to be the change you want to see in the bedroom. Nerds. It's good. Sex Avengers Assemble. Were you Captain America in this orgy? I was not. I was. You were Thor. Who? You were I was Thor. Thor. You were Thor. With my mighty hammer. Oh, that's so good. Yes, my partner, Allison, was Hawkeye, author of Girl Sex 101. And? Uh, getting it. And? Bad Dyke. And then also... Most people don't know this, a lesbian werewolf series. So my Sex Avenger story is that on Patreon, every time the amount increased by $50, mm -hmm. I would write a little synopsis of what it would be like for me to date one of the Avengers. So there's this manuscript that has like me dating Thor and me dating Hawkeye wow. and a threesome with Thor and Loki because, well, yeah, I mean, like, Brothers. If we're going to do the, yeah. Want to play this app with me? Yes. I'm in the place where it says players and then quickies and an exercise series. That's kink with Midori there. Then there's sexual health month. Sexy couples wish list. Your sexual schedule. Sex tips and house twos. Post pandemic toolkit. You have one oh, of those too. Yeah. Netflix and chill. Okay. Tell me what you want to do. <laughs> um, I want. Hacks for better pleasure? Yes. Now do I have to click on it too? I think. Oh my gosh. It Ooh. lets us. Are you a morning sex person or afternoon delight person? Yes. I should have seen that one coming. <laughs> There's audio guides too. 
Where do we, but where do we get the questions? Where do they ask us? I want them to ask us both questions so that we answer no, together. Like, oh, wait, by players. So if I say partners, maybe that's it. I can do things solo or I can do breast massage, vulva oh, massage, penis are, massage, sharing fantasies, how to look at your partner differently. When the kids go to sleep, ask an expert. Ooh, ask an expert. Who are, oh. who are their experts? Dr. Kristen Mark. So course. Who do you know? I feel like you're way more connected. Submit a question. We could be like, have you slept with Reed Mahalko? <laughs> Low hanging fruit, everyone. Guided scrotum play. Most partners of people with testicles are familiar about the sensitivity they may feel about them. That's really great language. It is. I, I'm a fan, but I was hoping that it was going to like ask, rapid questions. ask you should a we question. Just do, should we just do rapid did questions? You know? How did you learn about sex? My mom and dad had the, um, what is it? The joy of sex mm -hmm. in their nightstand. My dad had a prolific collection of penthouse started reading form for him F form f o <laughs> that's very funny um that was good uh i started reading form even before i knew what the word masturbate meant and was and before i was masturbating and so i was just like educated you know, work well work i mean i wouldn't form had a lot of fantasies in it i don't know that i would consider it an education resource it you was were, fancy but okay, it what was, was your family's attitude towards sex uh my mom and my dad also had was used to be a member of the playboy mansion back when that was a thing and my mom i remember my mom painting because my mom was a painter a playboy centerfold on black velvet for my mom and dad's best friends as their 20th wedding anniversary gift so they were very sex positive yeah. and my mom had the drawer with all the sex toys yeah on. yeah okay what is your relationship like with your body oh, i have a lot of weird shame and like i'm getting older now i've got my covid belly but this is also the pleasure bumper is there an aspect of your sexuality that you would like to explore more of i don't know i've explored a lot of it i'm not very kinky i'm good at things like i like rough sex i teach a workshop called rough sex for nice folks but kinky is not my thing okay last one do you enjoy sex and or masturbation if not why do you think that is i really enjoy sex i don't masturbate a lot i mean i every once in a while i do but are like, we the same person so here's a question for you if you could only do one sexual act like what what would you pick one sexual act yeah like you can label that however you want but like if, if there is one thing you're like Desert Island, you can only do this thing, what would you do? Lying down on my back, getting shoveled out by a thorough penis. Mine's cunnilingus all the way. I mean, or I, threesomes. okay, all of those things, but I, if you're, yeah. you're talking like Desert Island. Cunnilingus oh, all the way. Yeah, I, like, I like fucking, but I would rather eat pie. Next question. How does your sexuality affect your identity? Right now it's all messed up because I, my identity has been a sexologist and I'm trying to move out of that into other things. And so it's messing with my mm. sexual identity at large. Because now the thing that really yeah. defined me and was so important and I, mm -hmm. I wanted to maintain a good vehicle as a mechanic is just like, oh, well now do I care about cars? That's a good answer. I like that answer. How do you communicate your sexual wants and dislikes? My sexual wants and dislikes? Probably with noises like, uh -uh. me, let's do this instead. Ooga, ooga. <laughs> <laughs> Those sound like good sounds. <laughs> I mean, that would that's how we know it's like you're doing it right do you feel comfortable expressing your needs in the bedroom and why do you think that is yes but i'm very calculated about it so it's not like a i'm gonna give them all to you at once we're gonna do a like round or seven of you we'll just see like what you ha what you do and how we get to know each other and then mm -hmm. as it goes on then it's like okay i'm gonna need this so it's not a christmas list all at once no. yeah okay uh, you say fun. okay like you've you've got a like a training manual on that. I'm just thinking. Mm -hmm. I learn a lot about these, you know, people's mm -hmm. things. I think this is complete. You want to hit the complete Oh, we button? did it. Okay. Boom. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So on the count of three. Well, first of all, how can they find you? Readaboutsex.com. R-E-I-D. About sex. And if you would like to check out our sponsor for this video, please go to Coral on all of your little app stores and download it. There's a free version. There's a premium version. And it allows you to connect with multiple people to have intimate conversations and do meditative and workshop and finesse type things so that you can improve your sexuality and relationships. Stay, Stay curious. curious.